All right, guys, you have to see this. It's crazy that nobody's talking about. This. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Meta Horizon Workrooms came out in 2021. Now, I don't know if all of the features we're going to talk about here today were actually live at launch, but some of the features here are just completely breathtaking. I've already set up my desk. I'll set that up again here so you can just see how it works. I have my wife's laptop over here. I've covered up the keyboard because there is keyboard tracking and I want it to track this one and not that one. And sometimes when I look over there, it just kind of picks it up automatically. First off, kind of like you saw on Fluid, there's the same pass through feature here. That's actually really, really useful to be able to just see your hands, but it gets even better than that. Let's turn that off and you can see the keyboard is actually still there. There's keyboard tracking. You can see I can pick it up and put it down and it's actually trying to track all the keys directly to the keys on the keyboard here. You see my cartoon hands, but when I'm over the keyboard, I get a little bit of occlusion so I can actually see my hands. Now, it's not one-to-one -one necessarily. I can kind of see them. They're okay, but I don't know. It could be better, but this is impressive, guys. Like, look at this. Look how smooth that transition is. That was like the first thing that kind of blew my mind uh, was the keyboard tracking. And where you set that up is here in settings, desk, track the keyboard, and you can see I, I've selected the Apple Magic keyboard here. There's a few other ones. I think you can do other keyboards. You can add a new keyboard. Logitech, Microsoft, Dell, Apple. One thing I did notice is that it will pick up any QWERTY keyboard. So I, I had a different keyboard sitting here and it just still pasted the, the Magic Keyboard on top of it. So it's not as intelligent as it looks. I think it just looks for the letters and kind of pastes this on top of them. Um, like I said, it did jump over to the laptop when I was doing that before. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the desk just so you can see how that setup works. Let's do that. So you get prompted here to define a desk surface. I'm gonna use the controller, it's a little bit more accurate. So you go over to the corner of your desk, start here. Drag that all the way over and stop. Then you can set the desk height pushing this down like that. I notice I could push down a little bit further with my hand to make it a little bit more flush, but this looks pretty good. And then you confirm. That's really all it takes. Um, it kind of picks up everything else from there. There's my avatar. I usually have on a black t-shirt, but you can see as I speak, it's actually moving my mouth. That's really important for like the presence feeling when you're working with this with other people. Being able to see your mouth move uh, kind of helps, even though you're still talking to cartoon people. So there's that. So let's take a look at actually using your desktop or your MacBook or whatever you might be using here. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on computer. I'm gonna open up the uh, viewport here. But you can see here, I have the option to actually open up additional monitors. So there's the main monitor there for my Mac mini, and I can add another one. And there's that, that one there. You can add another one over here. So I have three monitors. Now there's no way to move these forward or back. They kind of have to sit like this. Um, so there's not a lot of crazy placements you can do, but you know, I can see these fine. Um, like I said in a previous video, I don't know how much you really want to work with your screens all over the place. It may not necessarily be useful once you actually start working. So you can adjust some things like brightness and the audio coming from the computer you're connected to. One thing I noticed immediately with the screens wrapped around your head like this is that you might get tired of kind of turning your head in order to see everything. So there's a cool little option here to move whatever screen might be most important to the center. So you can do that quickly without actually having to like turn your chair all the way around, unless you want to do that, unless that's fun for you, then you know, spin on, you know, whatever. So you're able to work here just like anything else. I have my keyboard. You can open up anything. I could open up Word. Here's a fake resume. That's not really my credentials there, but but the thing about workrooms is that it doesn't just stop here. This is nice for that special computing feeling, but the biggest benefit to workrooms is collaboration. And I think that's most important because having kind of this solo experience really makes you feel like 
there's no point in working like this. I could just work on my laptop or my three monitors. I don't have to be inside of AR or VR or whatever if I'm still working alone. Oh, looks like my battery's gone down a little bit. Let's grab, grab an external battery, throw that on. Working with other people is amazing in this app. Back in my early days of software engineering, we used to fly everybody to one office to do these agile sprint collaborations where we would develop ideas and talk through ideas with different teams, the testing teams, the development teams, the product owners, all of those things. We'd all have to fly across the country to sit in one room and have these discussions. With workrooms, you could do all of those things right here in your headset. So let's hop into one of my rooms. How about subscribe to the construct? You can see I'm loading up into the room here. And you can see I'm sitting at a desk in a presentation room. There's a whiteboard up here. And then there is an actual window for those who join from outside of workrooms. So you can send anyone a link and they can join you in this room and see this room. And then you can see their webcam right here. One thing that was kind of impressive to me is that this is actually a really good distance for the virtual screen, even better than the screens, the three screen setup that we saw before. This feels more like a laptop. Um, there is an option to even make this a little bit bigger. Everybody's eyesight isn't the same, you know, so you can make it a little bigger there. It's a little too big and it's not actually the right ratio. Things look a little bit stretched. So I'm just going to leave it on that shape. So you have a couple of options here. Check this out. So you have, you can switch monitors. So if you have some other monitors on your PC, where you want to switch between those three, you can switch between those monitors here. You can take a screenshot of whatever's on your screen. You can share this screen. So this is a pretty sweet setup solo, right? Got my time. I can switch seats inside of this room. I can actually go here and then pick a different chair in the room to sit in. It just kind of moves me around a little bit so I can see that I'm a little bit closer to the whiteboard. Maybe that might be necessary. You can raise your hand to speak so everybody can stay on mute Can let everybody know that you need to speak. When I tap that, it just lets everyone know in the room that I need to speak. So one of the things when I was going to these meetings, talking about enhancing software or software products, a lot of times you just want to share what's on your screen. So one of the things you can do here, go to share screen, it says, do you want to share your screen and audio to everyone in the workroom? So you'll share your screen and the audio from your desktop to the whole room. And when you do that, it actually shows your desktop to the whole room here. So let's say if I was sitting somewhere else, I could still see it in that same way. It's still there. One of the cool things about these meeting rooms is that you can actually change the setup of the room too. So if this is something where we needed to look at this screen for an extended period of time, maybe this setup isn't the best. You could switch over to presentation mode Then our seats are all lined up here along this line and we can look at the screen and I can still have control over this screen while it's being shared. So I still have full control. They can see my mouse move and everything. Everything mirrors one to one. So this is a situation where you can actually get some real work done. This is stuff that we're all doing right now, working from home day to day. So I want to show you what this looks like if more than one person is in the room. I don't have any friends right now that can help me do this. So it's just going to be another copy of me. I have my wife's laptop over here. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay. I'm going to mute just so we don't have a lot of feedback and join. So there I am. I actually joined this meeting from my wife's laptop. You can see me right over here. I'm not exactly centered in the frame so you can see you can see how how awesome this is you can see how useful this is so even if you don't have a headset and you're just joining from your laptop or desktop you can join a room like this the cool thing is is as you can see the person joining from outside can actually see this room as if it was being shared via webcam so they can see my avatar here i can wave at them so it even works when you change the layout of the room. So let's say if we went into like a breakout group, that's something that we used to do all the time. So you'd have like developers, testers, product owners, all needing to have separate conversations in one of these meetings. You can do that here. This splits the room up. 
Now we have the person who's joined right here from their laptop in this particular room. Now we're at separated tables. We have the person who's joined us from their laptop and we're sitting at one table while other people can sit at other tables. I believe I can actually jump from seat to seat. You can see all of the seats are available to jump back and forth between. If you're a presenter, you can maybe sit up here in the front, the top up there. Now I'm I, now I'm seeing everybody who's in this breakout room. Maybe if I'm the person who's speaking or presenting, I could share my screen here. Let's go back, share screen. So my screen pops up there. Now, I don't have real people in this room, but I understand that the spatial audio per room works. So I would only hear the people I'm sitting at this table with, and then the other people would hear the people at their own tables. So let's switch the room one more time. Let's go to conversation. You can see here, it's kind of a crescent layout. I've actually been in a room like this. I think Cisco had these telepresence rooms back during the pandemic. But yeah, this is um, this is how we actually would work in the office with people who are halfway across the country. So now you can have a similar experience right here inside your Quest 3 headset. So you can even bring in other files from outside. You can share things, upload things. I don't know how much you want flowing through Meta if this is a work application kind of situation. But you can do that. You can share files right up on the screen, pictures, whatever you might need to share. So it doesn't just end there, though. Like, you got to see how these whiteboards work. Check this out. I'm going to move my keyboard just a little bit higher. here. You know what? Let's move it over here out of the way. Let me show you how these work. Now, I'm left handed, so I'll use my left controller. So if you turn on the desk whiteboard here. You can say, let's set up the desk whiteboard, right? You can see it kind of shows me my desk again. It shows me where I can write. So if you take the controller like this, I have these grips on, so I'm just going to move that out of the way a little bit. But, but just draw around. So now I can tell where I can draw. You're all set. Simplest setup ever. But now I have the ability to actually write on this whiteboard. So it's not just here, it's also up there on the whiteboard for everybody in the meeting to see. So it's pretty freaking cool. There's an eraser, can erase. And if you're still watching at this point, uh, how about you like and subscribe. There you go. So it's right up there on the screen for everybody to see. Now, it might feel weird to just like look down and right in front of you, like having your head down, uh, scribbling out a diagram or something like that. I'm going to change the layout of the room a little bit to presentation mode. Let's go back to presentation mode. So now we're all lined up in front of the whiteboard. I can stand up there in front of it. It is so dope. Check this out. So if I go to the move option here, you can see the whiteboard is actually an option to to see. Right. So I can actually go here and now it gives me the ability to get up from my seat. So it's telling me to turn around and find the whiteboard. So you can see these arrows here and you can see the whiteboard is actually on this side of my office. So I'm going to stand up, walk over here and confirm the position of the whiteboard. You're all set. Continue. Now, there was an option earlier. I can't remember where that option was, but I can actually choose to see what's on. I think my kids have Cheerios on the floor right there, but I can see the floor. That probably would make somebody who's a little bit motion sick or maybe not used to VR if they could see the floor that they're standing on. But you can see I'm actually up here in front of the whiteboard while I'm inside of my office. I can use the eraser take that off. Hopefully you've already subscribed by now. And you can continue to draw. Now, one of the things that I remember doing back when we were planning software enhancements was uh, we just had so, so many notepads. So uh, you can actually do notepads here, sticky notes. And you can say, let's say if you wanted to say this is for three 16 
the date that we're recording this video, 316, and then come back here and maybe make some notes about, uh, you know, testing. Done. Testing done on 316 and so on and so forth, right? So we could do a whole, you know, timeline planning, anything you could think of that you would need to maybe use a whiteboard for. Obviously, you can stand up here and do it. I can actually change the location, scoot down to this side of the whiteboard. You can see the empty chair over there now. <laughs> so I'm actually able to move around a little bit. I can talk to the people directly and my avatar is going to be looking at those people. Uh, you could probably see here. I'll cut in a shot here of what the person on the external laptop can see. If they can actually see me waving at them from standing in front of the whiteboard. So then when you're and when you're done with that, when you're actually done uh, you can return to your seat here. The go to desk it removes all of that, lets me safely walk back to my desk here and continue. I can see the things that I've written up there on the board. I can still edit those things here. So you can see it's actually real time editing the whiteboard. I continue to add something else here. If I wanted to maybe draw this out first, get a couple of notepads in there. So it's, it's a lot of functionality here, guys. I really don't know why people aren't talking more about this app. I mean, this is everything you need to actually be productive with your team inside of VR. It's absolutely mind blowing. So it's amazing that people aren't really talking about this app. I think the Apple Vision Pro brought back the idea of working inside of a headset, but this came out in 2021, guys. And it has a lot of great functionality, real functionality for working with people actually getting things done in a team setting. And this is another reason why price is so important because if you have to buy 10 of these things or 20 of them, you wanna have it at a price point where the whole team can actually utilize the technology. Now, I know when it first launched, the cartoon avatars probably threw people off and made them feel like this isn't really a place I would wanna do work. Or maybe you just didn't want your sensitive information to pass through Meta's servers, I don't know. But either way, they've gone out of their way to make this actually functional and actually useful for people who are in a professional setting actually trying to get things done. So I was super, super impressed, guys. If you like something in the video, if you like something about Horizons, hit the like button. If you like this channel, get your finest polishing cloth out and give that subscribe button the shiniest of shines you can. And we'll see you next time in the construct.